everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm diving into the Stealth Build for 70 to Die version 1.0 based on the experimental release. The last time I covered a Stealth Build was for Alpha 21. I talked about the new zombie spawn add to the game, which many players felt it made Stealth less effective. So now that we have the new release, what's changed for Stealth? Let's check it out. Okay, so at first it might look like a normal stealth, but then when I hit this guy that I can't take that with one shot. He just stand there and wait for me to just shoot another one. And yep, the radiated, she will wake up, but she will not run to find me. It's not like the previous version. She would just wait for me to take a hit and I still gonna get the stealth play if I hit. Yeah, finally, thank you. One. And two. And then three. And he's still not noticing me. Okay, good. Good, good. As you can see, the stealth build in the clip is pretty effective. But it's not always like that. The stealth build now has been tweaked to be situationally effective. Some POI you can clear it out with ease using stealth perks and equipment. But there will also be times when even max out stealth perks or the best gear won't help you because of the trigger spawn system. Oh my. Have a bad feeling about it. Okay. Holy crap. Trigger. I can't run. Yeah. No, I'm dead. I know. Running. Block. I'm stuck. I need exit. Exit. Switch. Switch. No. 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 Survive. Wow, that was a trap room. Oh my god, you mean me. You guys are me. Playing stealth in 70 to die is quite a journey, since the game stealth system is pretty unique. Unlike run and gun or tank builds where you just need good gear and perks, stealth requires knowledge about mechanics to make it work. Don't get fooled by the clips I just show you here. The journey of the stealth player is not as smooth as it look. In the early game, stealth isn't that effective. Stealth can be underwhelming early on and can make many players give up on it. But trust me, if you understand how it works, stealth become much more effective and can even be OP in the middle and late game, especially with the new armor introduced in this update. I'll walk you through everything I know in this video, starting from a fresh spawn up until you have access to better gear in the late game. If you are a veteran and don't want any spoilers, now is the time to stop watching. But if you are here for the full scoop on the stealth build of 1.0, let's end the intro and get into the details. What's great about stealth? Stealth play is super effective against sleeper spawns. It let you save on bullets and medicine because you aim to stay undetected and avoid getting hit. Plus, there's something really satisfying about one-shotting zombies. But stealth play does have its downsides. You need to crouch a lot. Crouching reduces noise and let you monitor your stealth bar. However, couching also slow down your movement and gameplay. Stealth perks aren't very effective during Blood Moon events, and stealth can be a bit tricky for beginners. And most importantly, it's not effective against trigger spawns. Let me introduce you to two different types of zombie spawns so you don't get confused. The first type is a classic sleeper zombies. These zombies spawn in a sleeping state and only wake up if they detect you. They mostly spawn in POIs, waiting for you to discover them. Sometimes they are placed behind barriers or hidden places, waiting to scare you. 
However, you can work around this type of spawn. Maintain your stealth play if you find them faster than they can find you. Now, the second type is trigger spawn. Trigger spawns were introduced in Alpha 21 and are seen as a big nerf to stealth builds. These zombies only spawn when you trigger the system by doing certain actions, like pressing a switch or entering a specific area. The difference is that these zombies spawn in an aggro state, meaning they immediately detect you, no matter how perfect your stealth is. You have two choices to deal with them. Swap to run and gun and just shoot. Or run away from where they detect you and try to lose them to get the hidden status back. After you get hidden status back, you can resume the stealth play. I often recommend players to just go run and gun with this type of spawn because running away and resuming stealth can be time consuming since zombies can just wander around everywhere. Are you still up for a stealth build after knowing this? If you are, let's get to the basics. To play stealth, you need to stay hidden and not get detected by zombies. To do that, you have to understand how zombies can detect you. In my last video, I covered the three basics of stealth. The basics are light, noise, and distance. In the early game, you won't have a good skill or gear yet. So you need to rely on these basics to make stealth work. Let's break it down one by one. Light Light mostly affects your visibility. If you're playing during the daytime, near a light source, or on a rooftop without cover, you are very visible. This shows directly on your stealth meter. More light means a higher stealth meter. A higher stealth meter meaning it's easier for zombies to detect you. To play stealth effectively, you need to maintain your stealth meter to be low as much as possible. For the light factor, it means you need to stay in the dark areas as much as possible. The second factor is noise. Noise increases your stealth meter, making it easier for zombies to detect you. To minimize noise, you should first crouch. Crouch reduces the noise you make. It also lessens firearm noise and helps you monitor your stealth meter. Remember, when you climb a ladder, you will automatically switch from crouching to standing position. So don't forget to press crouch again at the end of the ladder. Another thing is that you will need to watch your step. There are a lot of trash on the ground and sometimes fault flaws that make noise when you step on. Early game, you will need to destroy or avoid these noisy obstacles up until you can get to read Urban Combat Volume 3. Another thing that make noise are weapon and armor, but I will talk more about it later in the video. But in short, you will need to equip yourself with quiet weapons and armor that doesn't create noise. The last factor is distance. Once you are less visible and making minimal noise, consider your distance from zombies. The closer you are, the easier it is for them to detect you. In the early game, you might not have high stealth perks or good stealth equipment, so keep greater distance from zombies. As you get better gear and perks, you can get closer without being detected. So those are three basic factors. If you enable feral sense on on your server, zombies will be more sensitive to these factors. Here is some brief summary of how these three factors are linked or affected. Categorized by environmental factors and things that player can control. But don't take the table too seriously. It's just a brief guide since the basic aren't exact science and it can overlap. For example, daytime is bad for light factor, right? But can you play stealth during the day then? The answer is yes. The three basic factors work together to make stealth effective. If you are lacking in one area, focus on the other two. For example, if you're playing during the daytime or with low stealth perks, 
you will have high visibility. So you will need to increase your distance and minimize noise as much as possible. In another case, if you are using a noisy weapon like um, a magnum with a silencer, increase your distance and make sure you are not visible. In the ideal condition for stealth, you play in the dark with a low noise equipment. Now you can reduce your distance from zombies. Oh my god, I hope that this doesn't make you more confused. Environmental factors are things you will encounter and need to adapt to. It varies from POI to POI, so I won't focus on them. Let's talk about player factors instead. Because these are things that you can prepare before exploring or doing quests, such as perks and equipment. As we build our character from low level to high level, you will need to carefully build your skills, all in this game it called perks, to create a good stealth build. Stealth perks are located in Agility Attribute Tree. There are two key perks here, Hidden Strike and From the Shadow. Both are useful for stealth play, but the one that affects your stealth meter is from the shadow skill. As a stealth player, your priority should be maximizing from the shadow, which means you also maxing out agility attribute. Personally, I focus on these two main skills, agility attribute and from the shadow skill. From the shadow is essential for stealth play, and maxing out agility attributes also help increase headshot damage by up to 300% and gives a 50% chance of dismemberment. Which means you have a 50% chance of one-shotting zombies if you hit them on the head with weapons associated with this tree. Hidden Strike is another useful perk that boosts damage as well as other weapon skills. However, this depends on your difficulty setting and playstyle. If you want to focus on damage increase, you should take Hidden Strike. However, on lower difficulty with good equipment, you might not have to invest heavily on damage boost skill. On the other hand, higher difficulty, you might need all the help you can get. Your leveling up style should depend on your playstyle and setting. But if you want a really effective stealth build, always focus on From the Shadow skill. Besides perks or skill, there are also many books that can help you with stealth play mainly the Night Stalker book set and Urban Combat Volume 3. So read these books if you find them. Alright, let's talk about equipment. Starting with weapons. Each weapon has its own noise level, and the quieter your weapon, the better your stealth game. Here's a list of weapons ranked by their loudness. All compare with a silencer equip. Let's make it clear you will need to use silencer mod on your firearms if you want to use gun on your stealth play. Without silencer mod, your gun will be too loud for stealth. Generally, I recommend bow, crossbow, and pistol for stealth build, as it's the three classic weapons that make really really low noise. But as a fresh spawn, you might not have access to pistol and silencer mods immediately. Well, unless you are really really lucky or use creative mode. Most likely you will be stuck with bow for a while. If you fire crossbow, it's also a good choice early game because it usually has higher damage than a bow. Later in the game when you have more from the shadow skill and can get close enough to zombies, a knife or other melee weapons are also a great option. Once you have a pistol and a silencer, you most likely be in the mid game. If you really want to use all the gun with silencers, just remember to keep your distance more than using a pistol because they are louder. Like we discussed on the three basic earlier, more noise, then increase your distance and stay in the dark. One last tip about weapons. Firing repeatedly increase your noise level because there are multiplying factors here. Okay, so don't spam your shots if you're playing stealth. Try to pause between shots if possible to keep things quiet. Now let's talk about the new armor system. I absolutely love the shanks in this version, especially the new looks. In the previous version, we only have light armor for stealth builds. 
but now we have more options. To play stealth effectively, you should equip armor that doesn't make noise. In version 1.0, you can equip any light armor for effective stealth play. If you want to use medium armor, you can, but each piece will increase noise by 10%. You can completely remove this noise by equipping advanced muffler connector mods to each armor part, making your medium armor silent. The exception is the assassin armor. Even though it's medium armor, all pieces have a noise level of 0%. So you won't need advanced muffler connector mods for it and can equip assassin armor instantly as you get it. On the other hand, heavy armor generates 20% noise per piece. Even with advanced muffler mods, it still creates a lot of noise. So I wouldn't recommend them for stealth play. Now about stealth boot mod, it's newly added to the game. But I haven't noticed any difference when applying it to armor. So I'm not sure if it actually works in game or how it works. Honestly, I forgot about it until I make this video. So sum it up, for stealth play, you can use any light armor or medium armor with advanced muffler mods. If you choose to equip this armor, pair with good weapons and good perks, you will get a similar stealth play like previous alpha. But if you choose to equip the assassin armor instead, that will be different. So the verdict for the best armor of stealth build for 1.0 is definitely the assassin set. First, it creates 0% noise, which is perfect for stealth build. Second, it is a medium armor, so it gives you more protection than light armor. Also, assassin armor has stats that increase the effectiveness of stealth play. Lastly, it has a really interesting bonus if you equip the full set. The assassin set bonus make you become hidden faster. So let's talk about the hidden mechanic here. As we discussed before, there are two types of zombie spawns. The sleeper zombies won't detect you unless you break your stealth play and trick a zombie that immediately detect you as soon as they spawn. Now, if you are detected, how do you get back to being hidden again? If you are detected, you will have zombies hunting for you. You are now in hunted state. To stay stealthy, first, move away. Move away from the last location they detect you. Then, break the line of sight. And then, hide in the dark spot. Just try to do it all together, don't have to be step by step. Theoretically, zombies will roam your last known location and stop looking for you after 30 seconds, according to the stealth.txt. Once they stop looking for you, you are now hidden, then you can resume your stealth play. The point is the assassin set bonus make you become hidden faster. If you have a level 6 armor, it can make you become hidden faster up to 100%. And yes, I tested it working very well even with the Pharaoh Sense on. Personally, I think the bonus nearly eliminates the hunting time of zombie completely. Making it look like they're just standing still waiting for you to take another shot on them. But, but you need to remember you can't rely solely on the armor bonus. If you ask me what is the most important thing is still from the shadow skill. In order to achieve this kind of gameplay, you will still need to build your stealth perks or skill and remember to practice the three basics. You need all of those, then combine it with the armor set bonus. Congratulations if you made it this far in the video, you now know nearly everything you need for great stealth play. There are still more depth to explore like how to get hidden effectively, how to use distractions and maybe all the cool tricks. But I think these infos is enough to get your stealth game running smoothly and fun. Other things I need to add with the new trigger spawn system in the game. This is not specifically for the stealth players, it's just the recommendation for every player. First, beware of your surroundings. Try to remember the layout of POIs especially the exits or where you came from. 
when you trigger a lot of zombie, you then can run away from the way you came from, or remember a choke point that you can make a stand and defense. Second is that invest in the movement perks, especially park out in the agility tree. This is good for stealth player because this skill allow you to have creative about your movement and also help you get out of sticky situations. Third recommendation, keep your building blocks on your hot bar all the time for emergency. You can get creative with it and it's really useful to blocking a zombie. Last tip is that always carry a panic gun if you can get one. I like using an SMG or if I can't have it, I will go for machine gun. If you find yourself in trouble, you need to switch to running gun mode. You will need to have this gun to defend yourself. Oh, on a side note, the Ferrocent setting has become easier for stealth player. Especially now that open and closed door don't increase your stealth meter as much as they did in previous versions. I'm so happy about that. So stealth play in Ferrocent is not as intense as before. And here the last part that you can skip. I had people ask me in the comment section before about my personal builds and my mods. So here is I'm gonna show you my usual leveling up pattern and my mods in the equipment. So here after I'm satisfied with agility tree, I usually go for pain tolerance skills for better survival. But if I'm playing on warrior difficulty and lower, I usually don't take pain tolerance skill. I will go for trader skill instead because zombie damage isn't that crazy. For my armor mods, I focus mostly on better protection and mobility. I'm not too concerned about inventory mods because I usually just grab everything I don't need and I usually travel light. For my weapon mods, it's pretty simple like this. I don't use rat remover on my panic gun because it has high fire rate. And when I'm using it, I'm not going to wait for ready at the zombie to regen their health. I'm gonna keep spraying bullets at them. So I use cripple and mod because at that situation, I prefer them slowing down more than anything else. So these are mods I equip according to my habits. It's not actually the best mods I recommend. It's more like a habit. If you have suggestion on my mod or anything else, feel free to drop a comment so I can grow as a player too. And that's about it for this video. I'll be getting back on my routine of making tier 5 navigation guide. There are 5 more buildings that I need to cover. And more importantly, this might be the last batch of tier 5 building guides I need to make because, well, the game is already released. If you want to see another building, guys, aside from tier 5 building, let me know in the comment. As for the instant nightmare series that I used to make, yes, I will get back to it after the stable version is out. Because I don't want to get interrupted if the stable launch requires a new save file. Sorry for the delay on this video, I didn't want to spoil myself so I played the game normally first before starting the test on stealth build. Thank you so much for your support, subscription, and likes. Since I'm not a full-time YouTuber or streamer, I can't have a constant video schedule. So I really really appreciate your support on my little channel. I will try to make more fun videos for you all and maybe try out some new games sometimes. I hope you enjoyed this video and the newly released 7 Day to Die. Thank you for watching and as Jen always say, stay safe out there. Bye bye.